dotted line. Let Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. Open and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. Open and praying for a Today on Liberty's Kids, cowardly bandit attacked the Dartmouth. Who is responsible for inflaming the subjects of Boston to this violence? Parliament raised the tea tax over our objections. Maybe next time they'll listen. But you must learn to distinguish between a patriotic act of protest and mob rule. All right. These colonies are troubling with England and Boston. This is not Massachusetts, you say, true. This is Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. But trouble moves round. Leave your politics on board. And don't pick up any politics ashore. September 1774. Dearest mother, please give my best to Dr. Franklin. As he may have told you, Parliament's response to the Boston Tea Party has not been warmly received. The colonies have sent representatives to Philadelphia to attend a Continental Congress. Uh, no thank you. The first gathering of leaders from each of the 13 colonies. They intend to draft a formal response to Parliament. There is so much beauty here. It's not difficult to understand why the people are passionate about their colonies. And passions, as you know, can make men's blood run hot. By giving Canada the Ohio River Valley, the lives lost 11 years ago during the French and Indian War were lost for nothing. But Parliament's demand that Boston pay for the tea they destroyed is perfectly reasonable. The tax is not reasonable. Only a Tory would think so. I thought Tory was a colony. You know, like if a person was a Tory, they were from Tory. Like a New Yorker is from New York. Sarah's not a Tory. Colonists who defend Parliament are called Tories, a nasty name on this side of the Atlantic. <laughs> I must learn to be careful what I say, since my opinions are not always popular. Sam, it's vital these pamphlets are distributed in Boston immediately. The pamphlets need to be read while the British warships are still there, with cannons pointing at church steeples. John, even I wouldn't accuse the British of targeting church steeples. And I consider myself an expert at stirring the pot. You're right, of course. It's too much. But we must get these pamphlets into Boston. We must. You gentlemen have a way of agreeing that makes it sound like you're arguing. <laughs> Your pamphlets are nearly done. Sarah, Henri, James, you remember Mr. Samuel Adams? Yes, sir. We were there in Boston the night of the tea party. A most splendid protest. The people should never rise up without doing something worth remembering. And this is Mr. John Adams. The same John Adams who defended the British troops who fired on our patriots at the Boston Massacre? James, that was many years ago. Oh, Moses, the lad is right. I did defend the British soldiers, and they were found not guilty for a good reason. They weren't guilty. And our patriots were? They simply stood up for what they believed. I think it was very brave of you, Mr. Adams to defend unpopular men in the midst of friends and neighbors who wanted to see them punished. I had justice on my side. The men involved in the so-called massacre were not patriots. They were a drunken mob spoiling for a fight. It was a case of self-defense. Facts can be stubborn things. If I had been there, I would have been with the patriots. Son, I admire your heart, but you must learn to distinguish between a patriotic act of protest and mob rule. The tyranny of the people can be just as brutal as the tyranny of the crown. The pamphlet looks good, John. Now all we need is a way to get them into Boston. How about you, James? 
Here's a patriotic act. Get these to my wife, Abigail. I would, but I've agreed to assist the scribes during the Congress. Since the harbor's closed, British troops patrol the roads, stopping and searching every carriage. There will be danger. Abigail is going to meet the convoy well outside Boston. The danger will be minimal. I'll go. You? You don't even believe in our cause. Maybe not, but I believe in adventure. I could take Henri with me. No one would suspect a thing. Sarah is right, and Henri is a stout, able young man. Right, Henri? Ugh. Good. Then it's settled. I'll notify Abigail by courier. You have to learn to be aggressive if you want to be a journalist. I think you were very nearly rude to Mr. Adams. I was to the point, nose to nose. You were as busy giving your own opinion as getting his. I like Sam Adams. Sam is a man of action. This is a time for action. Hey, who's that? Whoa! What have we here? Stand right where you are. I was looking for my shipmate. I'll be on my way. I offered to buy you a drink. I don't drink. That it? Or is you wouldn't join the toast? Me, Parliament, rot the wretched louts! Where are you going? I don't know my way at night. Oh, all right already. Look, I don't want any trouble. Let me go about my business. You are my business. I'm worried about you out in the chilly night air. He needs a warm coat of tar and feathers. No! Let me go! Stop! I can't believe I'm going to miss this. I can't believe you'd want to have anything to do with it. If you were a gentleman, you'd put a stop to it. Imagine how silly he's going to look covered with tar and feathers. He'll look like a giant barn owl. Hootie hoot! Hootie hoot! I'm Hootie the Sailor! <laughs> Isn't this more of a story than that poor unfortunate sailor? What story? We're loading wagons. These supplies have been sent from four different colonies. That's a story. I had the impression the colonies considered themselves separate countries. Uh, they did, until Parliament closed Boston Harbor. If they can do it to Boston, they can do it anywhere. <gasps> Stop! What is it? It's the Barn Owl on Parade! <gasps> Let me go! Leave me alone! What is my crime? That I disagree! Now that's a story. I want to see what happens next. Hold on, Henri. We're leaving soon. The wagon master said the roads out of Philadelphia are easier to travel with this moon. Hootie hoot! Hootie hoot! Hootie hoot! Hootie hoot! On the same city street, at the same time, I witnessed an act of compassion as strangers donated food for people in need, for people they have never met. Yet, I also witnessed a callous act of brutal bullying, and James is swept up in it. <laughs> Stop! No! <laughs> Let me go! <laughs> In large type across the top, Hootie Hoot gets the boot because he looked like a barn owl after they tarred and feathered him. And they kicked him when they cut him loose. Get it? Hootie Hoot? Boot? I don't think so. Moses, he had it coming to him. Remember what John Adams said about mobs? What does Mr. Adams know about the newspaper game? He could learn something from the author of that pamphlet he's sending to Boston, Novangelis. Now that man is a writer. Novangelis is John Adams. It's a pseudonym, meaning he writes under an assumed name. John Adams wrote a government of laws and not of men? That's John Adams? The very one. Maybe I should write using a... Pseudonym. Yeah, I'll call myself something modern. Dagger Quill. All one word but capitalize the Q. Chatter Quill would be more like it. The lesson here, James, is less about the name and more about the message. Mr. Adams is a very wise man. 
You would do well to learn from his example. Now get this paper stock over to Congress. <laughs> you will let me write a story about the Congress for the Gazette? Only if you study the issues. Learn about the men arguing the various sides. Deal! That boy. I forgot the paper stock. Dearest Mother, this land is even more spectacular than Father has described in his letters. But the people I have met are most uncommon. They desire to learn what is going on in the country, and their willingness to share with their fellow colonials gives me hope for mankind. I could choke half of them with my bare hands. Don't they understand the suffering that's going on in Boston? Patience, Sam. We will make the case with facts stacked one upon another like bricks. Soon we will have an argument so strong it will be impervious to attack. On our second day, an old man brought his sheep to the convoy. He explained he was too old to continue herding sheep. He had given most of his flock to his daughter, but he wanted to give the rest to the blockaded city of Boston. At first, our wagon master didn't want to accept the flock. It would have slowed us down too much. But I had an idea. All right, troops. I know nothing of sheep, but I know soldiers. I depend on you to assist me, Lieutenant. Yes, General, sir. Quit fighting with the Lieutenant. You there, big horn. If you behave, I will give you all ranks of honor and names of valiant French knights and musketeers. It is essential at the outset to determine our method of voting. Who is that at the podium? Him? That's Patrick Henry. Population of the larger colonies. What say you? Here, here! Point of order! At the provisional meeting of the Stamp Act, we voted by colonies. One vote each. Yes, we're all equal. No! Outrageous! Who is that standing up? Delegate Duane. He's from New York. What say you to that, sir? The matter of the vote has not been decided. That's John Adams. Him, I know. Let's make a deal. I'll tell you everyone I know, and you tell me everyone you know. I know everyone. Everyone? Who's that? John Jay of New York. Now please, I'm trying to listen. As we set about our business, I remind everyone of our purpose. We are here to re-establish harmony with Great Britain. We are not here to provoke Parliament into further action against us. Hear, hear! Outrageous! Gentlemen, come to order. I have just received a message by courier that British warships have fired cannon upon the city of Boston. <gasps> Church steeples have fallen. There is panic in the streets and some number of dead. As we near the end of our last day on the road, we are met by a most marvelous lady and her driver. She is the wife of the Massachusetts delegate, John Adams. Abigail Adams is so much more. You would like this lady very much. Welcome from all the good people of Boston. And you must be Sarah. Forgive my brazen husband, that Mr. Adams, sending a girl on such an errand. You must thank him for me. It has been a wonderful adventure. But I must ask you, we heard along our journey that Boston has been fired upon. Is this true? Heavens, no. General Gage sent troops to Cambridge and took arms and powder stored there. Patrols on the road stopped supplies from entering the city. But actual warfare? God save us from that. Has any word come from England? Anything new from Parliament that might provoke violence? No. General Gage can act under his own authority. He claims he seized the powder and guns to prevent violence. However, if he finds these pamphlets, it would be sedition. That could land us all in jail. Sedition? That's like treason. You have nothing to fear. I won't let anything happen to you. I promise. Please put everything in my carriage. I know how to get the pamphlets into Boston without anyone going to jail. My squadron. <laughs> if I follow the Marsh Road into Boston, no one will think twice. 
Young man, that's brilliant. Tell me what happened in the Congress. Well, I found the delegates at Carpenter's Hall arguing over what to do about the Intolerable Acts. One group wants to demand Parliament repeal the Intolerable Acts, while the other group wants to ask the King for his help. Who are the leaders? The Firebrands. That's what the Moderates called them. Are the Massachusetts men, John Adams and Sam Adams. Write the names down. Who are the Moderates then? Who speaks for them? Our own delegation. Can you believe it? Shame on Pennsylvania. Mr. Galloway sounds as if he were a member of Parliament himself. Good job, James. Excellent reporting. You have all the facts. Why are you so glum? Because they just talk and talk and talk. Why won't they fight it out and be done with it? Let's say a prayer of thanks we have men who aren't so quick to fight. The moderates won. They're going to petition the king to fix it with parliament. It could be weeks before there's any news. Moses, let me do a story on the sailor that got tarred and feathered. That's real news, patriotic and funny. I know where you can find the sailor. Maybe you should talk to him and still see how patriotic and funny you think it is. You want to ask Mr. Parker questions for the newspaper? Yes, doctor. He's in a great deal of pain. He'll have to stay in bed for a month, maybe more. He's hurt bad? He can't be. I saw him. I saw him stand up and walk away. When a person is tarred, the tar is like hot oil. They boil it. Tar burns a man's clothes onto his skin. You mean like hot candle wax and you peel it off and... Worse. When you peel the tar off, you peel the skin away. Then there's the risk of infection, which I'm afraid has already set in. But they were patriots taking a stand. They were criminals who used the cause to beat him and rob him of his hard-earned pay. But they were shouting slogans against Parliament, and they sang a liberty song. Did they respect Mr. Parker's liberty? You want the real story? Go ask him a question. I... I don't think I want to. The facts, James. If you want to be a reporter, you must have all the facts. Tears are salty. That adds sting to the wounds. One tear leads to more hurt and more tears. It's a cycle of pain no man should inflict on another for any reason. Who is it? It's Moses. I brought the young man I mentioned earlier. Could he ask you a question or two? Yes. Is there anything I can do? These wagons headed toward Boston? Somebody got an answer for me? Yes, they are. They were loaded in accordance with the law of the king. By the sound of that voice, you're a ways from home here, Missy. Mother, I am sorry to say these British soldiers were far from gentlemen. Two of them held muskets at the ready. They talked among themselves, deciding who would ride which wagon. They intended to sell the goods and pocket the money for themselves. Sir, my father is a British officer. Really? An officer, you say? Which one of you would like to sign for the wagons? I'm sure General Gage will want to know who took the supplies. General Gage? Uh, see, we didn't know these goods were... She's not the daughter of... We don't need to make an issue of who her father is. Just sign. We don't have time to take the wagons now. There aren't any newspapers or pamphlets here. I swear on the king's health. There are no printed or published works in these wagons. Move on, then. All right, stay quiet until we know what we're up against. Lieutenant, keep your eye on the six-man lava cannon. Colonel, 
Have we heard from the Indian scouts? They are the famous shadow warriors. You cannot see them until they are right beside you. Yes, sir, General, sir. They sound like sheep. It could be Indians. They make noises like birds and bears to fool the enemy. They must have taught the rebels how to do it. Let's get out of here. Keep moving. We will find a large field to engage in a proper battle. After Henri delivered his squad of sheep, he returned the dog he called Lieutenant to the old man. We rode back to Philadelphia on horses from the stable of Abigail Adams. I shall miss her. Safely back in Philadelphia, I made my way to Mr. Adams with a letter from his wife. Thank you so much. I worry about her there, in harm's way. She asks you to write more often. Yes, I must. If you would include a message for Dr. Franklin in your next letter to England, tell him I am as heartstrong as headstrong. I am convinced by this Congress that America will support Massachusetts or perish with her. I will tell him that. John Adams arranged for us to see a bit of Congress in action. Mr. Adams said it best. The distinctions between Virginians, Pennsylvanians, New Yorkers, and New Englanders are obsolete. I am not a New England man. I am an American. We are Americans. Yeah!